At this time, we don't have any microphones for the building. Jason is working on it. So um, we'll get started, and hopefully Jason can help us get some sound for everyone. Uh, Frank, you have to unmute yourself. Get your tech advisor in there and have her unmute him. Uh, so we'll start with the... Uh, Uh, we'll start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance by Councilman Isaacs. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can you call the roll, please? Swimming pool, $16,000. Falling Leaves Festival, $500. Family Fun Day, $1,500. Easter Egg Hunt, $250. We're leaving those three in the budget. They've already been approved. If they have them, we'll give them the money. If they don't have those events, then it'll just roll over for a year. Hmm? He, he's working on it. We don't, it's not working. The lights are on, there's no sound coming through the building. Uh, Boston Area Recreation Commission, 17,820. Friends of the Cateros, 1,000. Brookside Museum, 3,500. Gateway House of Peace, 3,000. The Bottle Museum, 500. VFW, 500. Wood Waste Reduction Services, $3,500 for eight hours. Pritchard Electrical, $85 per hour. Saratoga County Office for the Aging, 2,990 for nutrition, 2,990 for transportation. Boston Area Community Center, $17,000. Attorney for the Planning and Zoning Boards, $21,350. American Legion, $500. Captain Wellness, $7,500. 7, the Boston Area Seniors, $12,250. We also have a fuel agreement with the Ambulance Corps and the Fire District. So I need someone to move Resolution 1. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Any discussion? How loud? We're, we're, we're as loud as we can. Put your microphones on down there, guys, I guess. We'll, we'll deal with the feedback after, I guess. Uh, John, did you second that? Yes, I did. Okay. Brenda, can you pull the board, please? Councilman Blaisdell. He said yes again. Frank, you have to unmute yourself there. Councilwoman Kerr. Yes. Councilman Prolish. Yes. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisor Zalatnik. Yes. Resolution 2, to approve the Saratoga and the Daily Gazette as official town newspapers. I'll make the motion. Second. Any discussion? Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Carr. Yes. Councilman Frolich. Yes. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisors Zalatnik. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we don't like that. No. Motion number three to appoint William J. Kennery, attorney to the Planning and Zoning Board, to the salary of $21,315,000. $315. And uh, authorizing the supervisor to sign the contract for the term ending December 31st, 2021. So moved. Need a second. Second. Any discussion? 
Councilman Blaisdell. He said yes. Councilwoman Kerr. Yes. Councilman Perlis. Yes. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisors Aladdin. Yes. Resolution number four to approve the following appointments. William Lewis, multiple building inspector. Mark DeLong, provisional deputy multiple building inspector. Jason Miller, deputy highway superintendent. Russell Newitney Foreman. Bill Wade, highway safety officer. Barbara Kerr, deputy supervisor. Wait a minute. Um, DeLong should no longer be professional, sorry. Oh, okay. That's right. Yep. Sorry. That's all right. Nick Mark, a deputy multiple building inspector. I'll make the motion. Second. Any discussion? Brenda? Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Kerr. Abstain. Councilman Frolish. Yes. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisors Allotnik. Yes. Motion number five to adopt the 2021 salary and hourly schedule for the 21 County Milton budget effective January 1st. Step raises are noted and will be issued upon employee anniversary dates in accordance with the employee manual in the town code. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Any discussion? Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Carr. Yes. Councilman Frolish. Yes. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisor Zalatnik. Yes. Jim, just as a point of order here, uh, sometimes at the county level we will read the resolutions, and if anybody would like one voted on separately, we can do that. Can I, are we allowed to speed things along by me reading the resolutions and then ask for one, you know, a vote on all of them? And if anybody has any questions on the single one, they can ask when I'm done reading to uh, vote on that separately. Is everybody okay with that? Okay. Um, resolution number six, to authorize the supervisor to invest town funds in day-to-day -day accounts, certificates of deposit, and to use the Boston Spa National Bank, Adirondack Trust, and Key Bank as the town depositories of funds and to accept quotes for CDs. Resolution seven, to approve the payment for the annual dues of $1,200 to the Association of Towns. Resolution 8, to approve the Town of Milton fee schedule as attached. Resolution 9, to authorize reimbursement for the cost of food, lodging, and for mileage in accordance with federal rates for town officials while on town business. Resolution 10, to authorize the Highway Superintendent to spend $2,885,805 in highway funds for general repairs and improvements. Resolution 11, authorizing the Highway Department to rent equipment not to exceed $20,000 per item. Resolution 12, to approve the Town of Milton Highway Department to work with the Village of Boston Spa, Town of Galway, Town of Boston, Town of Malta, Town of Greenfield, Town of Providence, and any other municipalities on a joint municipal understanding, shared services. Resolution 13, to authorize the providing of uniforms for building inspector, deputy building inspectors, dog control officer, not to exceed $350 per person, and authorizing annual allotment of $150 for safety steel toed shoes and authorizing annual allotment of $200 for safety glasses every two years as per personnel policy. Resolution 14, authorizing Highway Superintendent Dave Forbes and Deputy Superintendent Jason Miller and multiple building inspector William Lewis to take home town trucks in accordance with IRS regulations. Resolution 15, to accept the following appointments to the town committees as suggested by the supervisor. Budget committee, Benny Zlotnick, Jim Fry, John Frolish, Mike Iacolucci. Personnel committee, Benny Zlotnick and Frank Blaisdell. Super seniors and veterans, Barbara Kerr, Neil Schurman, Tom Harris. Open space, Frank Blaisdell, Marianne Morgan, Linda Buccino, Eric Smasinow, Patty Kelsey and Brenda Howe. Youth Bureau, Meg Stevens. Facilities Committee, Ryan Isaacson, Isaacson, sorry, Ryan. Anthony Anderson, Mark DeLong, myself, and John Frolich. Handbook Committee, Barbara Kerr, Ryan Isaacson. Disaster <coughs> Preparedness, Bill Lewis, Paul Morosi, Joe Spofford, John Frolich, Ray Otten, Glenn Bowers Jr., Rich Wisen, and Kevin Crow. Historic Structures and Places, Karen Stalters, James Richmond, Brenda Howe, Michael Shallon, Maddie Shallon, and Allison Saul. Resolution 16, to approve the town's credit card use as follows. 
Credit cards will remain in a locked drawer in the office of the town controller until authorization is obtained from the supervisor. Receipts for credit cards purchases must be submitted to the controller's office and attached to the statement of payment. Any employee making unauthorized credit card payments purchases will be required to make restitution to the town within 10, day, 10 days and may be subject to discipline. That's it for resolutions. Resolution 6 through 16. So that would be a motion to approve resolutions 6 through 16 as read. Frank made that motion. I'll second it. John second it. Okay. Any discussion? I, I did have a question under facilities committee. <coughs> you named myself, yourself, and John Prolish as three members of the board. Will one of us have to be say an alternate? Yes, Ryan, if you'd be willing to be the alternate to sure. that committee, that'd be great. Thank you. Sorry. That one got by me. I don't have that. I, I don't either. But no. You, John and I had a discussion this afternoon, and I we talked it over, and I'm putting John back on. His expertise in, in the bidding and, and bonding process would be a big help. Councilman Blaisdell. Councilwoman Kerr. Yes. Councilman Prolish. Yes. Councilman Zoxon. Yes. Supervisor Zalatna. Yes. Next up, a motion to establish regular town board meetings on the second and fourth Wednesday of the month at 7.30 p.m. at the town offices, 503 Geyser Road, with temporary meetings at 310 North Line Road, and via Zoom until further notice. Make the motion. Brenda? Who was second? Uh, Frank did. I'm sorry, I can see Frank, I can see Frank and I can barely hear him, but he's saying yes to things, right. so I'm, I'm just passing that on to everyone. Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Kerr. Yes. Councilman Prolish. Yes. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisors allowed. Yes. Motion to reappoint James Craig to the position of town attorney at a salary of $52,834 per year. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Discussion? Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman yep. Carr. Yes. Councilman Prolish. Yes. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisors Zalatnik. Yes. yes. Motion to reappoint MJ Engineering Land Surveying PC as Town Engineering with the Municipal Billing Rates Schedule Effective 1 1 2021 and authorizing the supervisor to sign the contract. I'll we'll make that motion. Thank you, John. Second. I'll second. Thank you, Ryan. Any discussion? Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Kerr. I'm voting no on this. Um, I've addressed this in a couple of emails, both to the engineering company and to the rest of the board. And I feel there's too many conflicts of interest, and these contracts haven't been reviewed in several years. And I think we uh, should send out some letters of interest to uh, um, talk to other engineering companies. Councilman Prolish. Yes. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisors Alive. Yes. Uh, motion indicating that the procurement policy has been reviewed and readopted by the town board. I'll make that motion. Second. Thank you. Any
any discussion? Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Carr. Yes. Councilman Crowley. Yes. Councilman Zaxon. Yes. Supervisor Zalatnik. Yes. yes. Motion to reappoint the following people with the following terms. John Bartow, Planning Board Chair, term ending December 31st, 2021. Meg Soden, Zoning Board Chair, term ending December 31st, 2021. John Whittle, Planning Board Member, term ending December 31st, 2027. Eric Smasenow, Zoning Board Member, term ending December 31st, 2025. J.D. Wood, Zoning Board Alternate, term ending December 31st, 2021. And Jerome Cook, Ethics Board Member, Term ending December 31st, 2023. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Any discussion? Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Kerr. Yes. Councilman Frolish. Yes. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisor Zalatnik. Yes. Motion to authorize the Planning, Zoning Board, and Building Department staff to attend the Saratoga County Planning and Zoning Conference in 2021 with cost paid by the Town of Milton not to exceed $1,500. Uh, we're going to put this in, but at this time right now, the county is trying to figure out some way to do uh, remote classes or learning. So uh, there, was, there still may be some cost to, to attend, but um, it probably won't be that high. So just in case anybody was uh, curious about that. <clears throat> I'll make the motion. Frank Second. Any further discussion? Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Carr. Yes. Councilman Frohlich. Yes. Councilor Yes. Supervisor Zalatnik. Yes. Uh, motion to appoint the following people as department liaisons. John Frohlich to the Planning and Zoning Boards. Barbara Kerr to Highway and Building Departments. Frank Blaisdell to the Town Court. And Ryan I. Soxon to Building and Grounds. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Councilman Blaisdell. Councilman Carr. Yes. Councilman Frolich. Yes. Councilman Jackson. Yes. Supervisor Zalotnik. Yes. Uh, I don't think we have an executive session, so I will entertain a motion to uh, uh, adjourn, and we will start our regular. Yep, I saw that. We'll add them. It, we can add people at a later date. Tony. Supervisor, we're not going to have a, a chance to uh, question anything on the budget? No. <laughs> not, not an organizational meeting. You, well, can ask, you can ask at the regular. What, what's the sense of us being here? To be honest with you, I don't mean to be a troublemaker, <clears throat> but what the heck is the sense of us being here when we don't have any input on the budget? It's our cost to earn money. That's a good point. And when we had, you had opportunities when we were doing the budget. Well, yeah, but did the, the uh, residents of the town know about when you prepared this budget? Yes, did we, they did. Or we were had, we aware? Had, we had several meetings. Could we, could we come to these meetings? Or were they closed? No, they weren't closed. We had them, we had them on Zoom. And yeah, we had Zoom, them. Zoom, okay. And we I had, don't have Zoom. And we had, and they were open to the public. A limited. I don't number. have Zoom. Okay, and a limited number of residents were allowed in the building. Whatever our okay. What our uh, saying was Betty, at the time. I'm saying this. I can't make any headways with you. I think this whole thing is a sham, and I think we, as citizens of this town, deserve to be heard. I'm, I'm walking out. I don't care if anybody else sticks up with me or not. And by the way, if you had done your job from the beginning, we wouldn't be having all this shit. Okay. 
Hey, don't show me that tank flap. What's the matter with you? Okay, well, we don't we don't usually have what's the matter with me? We don't, all right, Jim, never mind. We don't usually have public comment on, on, on an organizational You're meeting. You're so we're going, we're going no, to adjourn. Not. Jim, hang on a second. We're going to adjourn for 11 minutes here, and our regular meeting will begin at 7.30 as scheduled. So I need a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Sure. Sure. Need a second. Frank seconded. Okay. Councilman Blaisdell. Councilwoman Kerr. Yes. Councilman Froelich. Yes. Councilman Zaxton. Yes. Supervisors elect. Yes. Thank you. We will reconvene in about nine minutes. At this time, we'll call our regular meeting to order. Uh, Brenda, can you? Brenda, can you call the roll, please? Right. Councilman Blaisdell. Councilwoman Carr. Present. Councilman Frolish. Present. Councilman Azoxen. Present. Supervisors elect. Present. Uh, motion to accept the minutes of the December 23rd, 2020 meeting. I'll make that motion. Discussion. Were you going to make a correction as far as the statement we talked about? That was, that was oh, yes, I'm sorry. Hang on a second, John. At our last meeting, I stated that it was the facilities committee that made the decision to uh, leave, the, leave the heat turned down to 55 degrees, and it wasn't actually the facilities committee, it was the board who decided or not decided to do that either way, but it wasn't the facilities committee. I just wanted to clear that up. I don't remember ever voting on that. No, we didn't. It just got discussed and nothing ever nothing ever came of it. So that's that's what I'm saying. That it wasn't the facilities committee, it was us. We talked about it and we never made a decision. Yes. Councilman Froelich. Yes. Councilman Zaxon. Yes. Supervisors elect. Yes. Um, we, we, we've been asked to have public comment at the beginning of the meeting, so we'll try it and see how it works. If anybody has anything to say, they can raise their hand or they can come up to the board, uh, to the podium. Um, it's going to be kind of hard for everyone to hear, but we'll give it away. Does anybody have anything they'd like to say before the meeting starts? I do. Yes, sir. Yes, please. We don't have a microphone, but we'll do the best. To Can I remove my mask? Please, please do. Good evening, everyone. My name is Michael Kane. I reside on reside on Meadow Lark Drive in the Milton Oaks Housing Development. I have two questions for the board, and then a quick statement I'd like to read. When the request for a license to operate was first brought to the board by, for consideration by Planet Waste. Why were members of the community not notified and given a chance to discuss grievances and questions? Also, why doesn't the community have a chance to be involved before permit renewals are issued each year? Mr. Dawson, the owner of Planet, has stated in the past that people who live here should have done their due diligence before buying their homes. Given the fact that I was going from a 15-minute commute to work from my home in Delmar to an hour commute from my home in Milton, believe me, my wife and I did our due diligence before moving here. My wife and I spent time walking and driving the neighborhood. We talked to neighbors about living here and asked about the lawyer's salvage yard, to which we were informed they had never had any issues. We personally had no issues for the first 12 years that we lived here. When we moved into our home, there was an intact fence around the entire salvage yard from any 
direction I could see. You could not see any of the vehicles that there were, maybe a couple hundred, opposed to now there are over a thousand. Five years ago, I retired with many home improvement projects plan planned, including building a deck on the back of my home. That is not going to happen anytime soon, because we don't want to look at a two to three story high pile of scrap metal that towers over broken and falling down fence. Nor do we want to hear and feel the constant booming that makes everything shake. The dust and exhaust fumes that come from the planet waste machinery make it so we can't even open our windows. Can you imagine being embarrassed to have people come to your home? Imagine that. You can't have family and friends come to your home because you're ashamed of where you live. I worked my whole life, retired, and now I'm ashamed to have people come to my house. We have lived here for 17 years. We have witnessed what has changed behind our home and the operation behind it in those 17 years. We chose, as did our neighbors, to move to this neighborhood. We did not choose to have our quality of life diminished by a business that should have never been allowed in a residential area. In conclusion, I had high hopes for transparency and inclusion when I was convinced that this board would be the best choice to vote for, and I did. Thanks for your time. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Before I close my question, if I ask a question now, can I still ask another one at the second? Of course. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you for having public comment. Name and address, please. Uh, Michael Landis, 272 Meadowlark Drive. And thank you again for having public comment at the beginning. My question is this. Why is planet owner Tony Dawson permitted to operate a business for which he is not zoned or licensed? The original license was granted to Ed Loya's used auto parts, a non-operational salvage yard. When Tony Dawson purchased the land, he instituted an entirely new business, a fully functioning six day a week, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. metallic waste processing plant with various large loud industrial machinery. You can see it from my bed. Dawson claims his exemption from zoning and licensing laws is, quote, grandfathered in from the previous business. This is false. Dawson is operating an entirely different business than Lloyd. Thus, there needs to be a public hearing and new assessment of his activities. In an interview with the trade publication A-R-A-N-Y, Dawson himself even admits that Loya's business was, quote, dormant and on, quote, vacant land. Dawson's planet is anything but dormant and vacant. We have aerial photos to also demonstrate the dramatic change between Loya's dormant yard and Dawson's active processing plant. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Hello. My name is Karen Bishop. You have to be a little bit louder. Sorry. My name is Karen Bishop, and I live at 270 Meadowlark Drive. Um, I just have to say the fact that he spoke about us not doing due diligence when we moved here. That is so unfair because when we moved here, there was nothing, there was no problem back there. It was absolutely comfortable. Three years ago, just three years ago, I built a room in the back of my house and a deck outside in the back. I have a beautiful backyard that was lovely until all of this happened. It's very discouraging. But my other question is, I have here a um, piece of paper that was done by a Paradino, Paradino firm two years ago, I think it was, February 9, 2019. In it, she outlines all of the negative things that are, that are going on, illegal, back there, and yet this was presented to you two years ago, and nothing has been done. How discouraging for us who live here. It's like we don't count. I mean, there's a myriad of violations that planet has, and it's all outlined here. And noise, 
buildings, um, boxes, huge, huge boxes. I mean, it's 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 very unsightly, and it's just it's not something you want in your backyard. You wouldn't want it in your backyard. So um, I think there's more of an economic hardship as well, and there seems to me that it would have a ne negative impact on the town. So. Are you, do you have this piece of paper on the Ferragino part? I believe we do, yes. Okay. If you'd like to give it to a copy of it to Brenda, she can redistribute it. Unfortunately, I'm trying to make this copy of the printer. It's very hard. caretakers of my house in Milton and everybody else's house in Milton, you've done an abysmal job of taking care of it. It's going to be almost one year now that town hall has been shut down and it was improperly and illegally condemned by Bill Lewis. He had the authority to do it but he did not have proper cause to do it. And yet, and yet when your health officer indicated <clears throat> that the mold in the town hall was relatively insignificant. You did nothing about that. You had a statement done by Van Gilder Engineering indicating that there was a mold situation but did not indicate the extent of the mold and severity of the mold. A review was done by another engineering firm of your inspector's report. And he came to the conclusion for individuals with no allergies to the material present, there is no danger to them for continued occupation of the building. The building cannot be condemned because the requirements for condemnation have not been met. No emergency currently exists. You received this on March 17th. And you totally ignore it. He did not even address the issue that, well, maybe we do have a mold problem, but is it severe enough to take the employees out of it and then take over the community center away from the senior citizens? No, you didn't even talk about that. You had a report last March, and then you continued and stumbled onto who knows what plan that you had. <clears throat> well, are we going to repair? We're going to get an estimate for that. We're going to get an estimate for this. So we had a facilities committee, and you had John Munter put on there. John Munter Jr., be quick, because he got fed up with what was going on. And then John Munter Sr., a very respected builder in the area, he came on the committee. And he came up with his own recommendations. At a meeting of September 8th, he indicated, <clears throat> after being placed on the facilities committee a few weeks ago, I have made an attempt to analyze the path forward to restore the town complex for reuse. A study to present to the town council outlining location and cost for adequate facilities for long-term use, re using all information that the facilities committee has generated since March and taking a tour of town hall with a qualified remedial and reconstruction company has enabled me to arrive at a prudent way to move forward. John Mother knows what he's talking about. He has done a lot of building. Yeah, one minute, sir. I presented my opinions to the Facilities Committee on Friday, September 3rd, which included Council Members John Frolish, Barbara Kerr, and Mark Law. Our meeting concluded with different views to move forward. He had two plans, Plan A and Plan B. Plan A was for temporary remediation, temporary repairs to the roof, and temporary remediation for the mold at a cost of $110,000. Plan B was $645,000. The Plan A, and Plan A, he made that recommendation, 
They used to have this could last two to three years. In the meantime, in a period of two to three years, you can take the adequate amount of time to do the proper analysis and planning for what really needs to be done. And yet, did the town board address this letter? Did the facilities committee bring this letter to the town board so it could be talked about openly? Did you take a vote on it to determine, shall we go along with the recommendation of John Munger, or shall we just kind of plot along, not knowing where the hell we're going in the dark? No, you didn't do any of that. And if you did, you could have had the same result you started on in September. It could have been done by November, December at latest. Everybody could have been back in town hall. The senior citizens could have had their community center back, which they are entitled to. But you didn't do any of that. How incompetent, how incompetent can you people be? Literally. That's my house over there. That's our house over there. I mean, for God's sake, we stop stumbling around, do the temporary repairs, and get the hell back in town hall. There's no danger there. If you did that, you would not have had the problem with the breakage of the pipes. And that's my other question. Who is responsible? Who is being held responsible for not putting heat inside of town hall when it was vacant? Who is the incompetent boob? You didn't have the heat on in the wintertime in town hall and the pipes froze? If you did all of that back in September according to John Munter's recommendations, you would have been in there and you would have not been facing this additional damage that now your insurance company is going to have to pay. And when they pay on your behalf, it's going to be substantial, no doubt. So that's going to increase your rates for your insurance, which is my tax money as well. You could have been back in town hall before Christmas, and you didn't do it. You didn't address it. I mean, come on, people. What the hell are you doing? Thank you, John. Time is up. Thank you. Thank
and there's really no way that any of you can say you're not aware of it. So as a member of this community, someone who has to deal with it every single day, let me tell you, it's torturous to live in our home. It's torturous. We literally cannot even enjoy the outside of our own properties. We can't pay our mortgages, we pay our taxes, good citizens, and we can't even enjoy the very homes that we live in, and it's just not right. We lived here before Tony ever showed up on the scene. And it's not right. It's just not right. And so that's it. Thank you. Okay, at this time I'm going to close the public comment for the opening beginning of the session of the meeting. We have a public hearing on local law one to designate a certain highway intersection for the posting of a stop sign. See as loud as I can. Uh, this one in the paper on January 6th. Please take note that there will be a public hearing on Local Law 1 of 2021 for the following proposed designation of certain highway intersections for posting of stop signs and requiring a full stop before entering the designated intersections to be held on January 13, 2021 at 7.35 p.m. at the Town of Mountain Town Community Center, 310 North Line Road, Wells Fargo, New York, 12020, and by Zoom. All interested parties are invited to attend and be heard. All right, at this time I will open the public hearing on Local Law 1 of 2021, if anyone wishes to speak. Uh, if you're on Zoom, raise your hand. If you're here, raise your hand. I'll call on you and you come up to the podium. You'll have your three minutes to speak on the, on the issue. Kim, are you going to, would you like to speak on the uh, stop sign? I'm sorry, I missed the beginning of that. Is this the stop sign for yes. citation and first street? Oh, yes, yes ma'am. Okay, okay, three okay, minutes. I'm, okay, I'm a walker in the neighborhood. I walk every day, and I have to tell you that over the years, I've literally almost been taken off my feet on multiple occasions. We've had several accidents at this point in the neighborhood. We're in a neighborhood, 30 mile an hour posted neighborhood with a cul de sac. And these people come through this road like it's a speed wagon. We have become the new North Line Road. They are avoiding North Line and coming through Birch Street in an effort to avoid the stop signs, the stop lights, whatever. Um, the accidents are getting more serious. The most recent one, uh, the person hit a car that was parked in front of their home. The one prior to that, in a car in the driveway of their home. There was one prior to that that I, from what I'm told, went across several yards and hit a car in someone's driveway. I mean, that, there's a very big safety issue here. There's children, there's pets, there's people walking in a very active neighborhood. And it's really becoming dangerous to even, you can't even say that you can go so you get to go play in the front yard because they might end up dead from a car coming through the front yard. It's really gotten out of control. So, um, you know, I just think if people had to stop a couple times coming through, you might think twice about taking our road. You might use North Line like they should be using. Thank you, Kim. Yes, sir. My name is uh, Gary Denise. I'm a resident of 102 Citation Line. Um, one of the properties that the proposal for the stop signs would actually be placed on. You're going to have to speak a little louder, sir. People are going to have to speak up, that's all. Is this coming? No, it's, no, we're not working tonight. I have no idea what happened. I'm also the author of the petition that was submitted to the board. I don't think it's actually been read out loud. I'd like to read it if that's okay. Sure. Right. Supervisors Lotnick and members of the town board, we are writing to urge you to act on an important safety measure for the Citation Way and Birch Tree Lane neighborhood and roadways. 
Over the years, the residents of our neighborhood have witnessed vehicle after vehicle speed through Birch Tree Lane while traveling between Greenfield and Rollins Street. Birch Tree has a posted speed limit of 30 miles per hour, yet vehicles are frequently seen speeding through our neighborhood. Most recently, on September 22, 2020, a vehicle driven by a 22-year-old male sped down Birch Tree and lost control, nearly striking a child on a bicycle. The vehicle then crossed all lanes of travel and slammed into a parked pickup truck on the opposite side of the street in front of 34 Birch Tree Lane, causing significant damage. Please see the attached accident report from the Saratoga County Sheriff's Office. This was a near tragedy that could have been prevented. As previously stated, Birch Tree has a posted speed limit of 30 miles per hour. This accident, which occurred with such force as to spin the parked pickup truck 90 degrees, can only be explained by the operator disregarding the speed limit and driving recklessly through our neighborhood. On December 9, 2016, another accident occurred in the same location, only two houses down. Another speeding vehicle lost control and went through multiple front yards before striking a parked vehicle at 38 Birch Tree Lane, again causing significant damage. Witnesses described the sound of the impact as being like a bomb going off. Please see the attached accident report from the Saratoga County Sheriff's Office. The solution to make our neighborhood safer and enjoyable for all of the children and adults who appreciate walking, running, bicycling, walking their dogs, and simply working and playing in their yards peacefully is to add two stop signs at the intersection of Citation Way and Birch Tree Lane. We propose that one stop sign would be placed on the corner of 102 Citation Way and the other would be placed on the property line between 32 Birch Tree and 30 Birch Tree. This would effectively provide a necessary traffic control device and put an end to dangerous accidents in a densely residential neighborhood. For each accident that has occurred, there are countless of other incidents of near misses where children and adults alike were nearly struck by a speeding vehicle. It should not take someone being seriously injured or killed for the board to make appropriate changes. This problem has been ongoing for quite a few years and it is documented and being brought to your attention for immediate action. The town of Milton is both responsible and liable for our neighborhood safety. Please help us add these two stop signs which will have a dramatic impact on our safety and the ability to enjoy our homes in our neighborhood. Attached, please find a list of names and signatures and associated addresses for the residents who are in strong support of this action. It was signed by 47 people in the neighborhood. Everybody that I talked to, I couldn't find one person who didn't want it. I've lived there for four and a half years. Many other people who signed this have lived there much longer than that. There is it's always been an ongoing issue. Well, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Bantham, please. Yes, hi, Martina Bantham. I'm at 32 Birch Tree Lane. So I am actually the property that the stop sign would be on the corner of. And I'm not going to repeat everything that the previous two speakers said, but I just want to reiterate that it is that everything they said is correct and it is absolutely important that we get the stop sign. It really should have been here when the neighborhood was built. That would have been probably the most appropriate thing to do. I've lived here since 2003 when it was built. And it is ridiculous how the cars fly through here, have absolutely no respect for pedestrians, for children, kids on bikes, pets, all of that. So I'm not going to take my full time, but just want to reiterate that it is important that we get that and it will make our neighborhood much safer. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone else? <coughs> Seeing none, I'm going to have one, one more. Who's Joey? Oh, I don't see, I mean, he's there, but I don't see his hand up. His hand's on this side. No, it's not on mine. Is it on yours? No, never mind. Never mind. Okay. So I need a motion to uh, close the public hearing. So moved. Second. 
Can you pull the board, Brenda? Sure. Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Kerr. Yes. Yes. Councilman Frolish. Yes. Councilman Rice Oxen. Yes. Supervisors Lavin. Yes. Yes. Side of Birch Tree and each spot on citation, making a three-way stop. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, the board will take our, our comments, take your comments, and uh, and we'll deliver a decision in, in two weeks at our next meeting. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Ray, come on up. Would over here be okay? That's fine, Rick. Yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is Ray Ott. He's the uh, head of the, the emergency corps. And I had a conversation with Ray yesterday. Um, Monday? Monday. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know. What day is today? <laughs> yeah, really. But with everything that's going on with the county ramping up COVID vaccinations and the state ramping up vaccinations, we've had a lot of questions as to could the town actually do one? And I talked about this with Ray, and we had a, a, a bit of a conversation, and Ray said he would love to come and explain to folks the pros and cons of the town actually trying to do this. So, uh, Ray? And I, I appreciate you know you allowing me to come up, because uh, I, I always like to sort of eliminate the middleman uh, on things, because it's the old telephone game. Uh, the only thing that sort of disappointed me coming tonight is when people speak, and then they leave, because then they don't all hear. It's like when you go to your kid's concert and you leave early. <laughs> you don't care about the rest of the kids. But this is an important issue. Um, we're talking something that's going around killing people. Um, what Ben and I talked about was there was a, an offer for the uh, emergency prep committee, of which I'm part, uh, John's part. Um, to, if needed, set up an outdoor uh, vaccination point. Um, department of, or the uh, public health department calls it a pod, point of distribution. Um, I've worked two of them last week. I'm going to be at two this week, and probably two every week until they tell me to stop doing it. Um, up at the New County uh, Health Building, up next to the jail. Um, one of the things that has to be discussed is what do you do to set these up? It's not just, all right, let's put some tents up with heaters in them and then, boom, we'll give out vaccines to six million people. Doesn't happen that way. The pods that we work at are well rehearsed. They are drilled every year. Um, in emergency services, uh, if you're involved with emergency services at all, you know it's all about drilling. You drill and drill and drill until it happens. And then when it happens, you're ready to, to go. Okay, you can do what it is you've drilled. And that's exactly what we've done up at the, um, the public health building. Um, one of the big things that we're having a problem with is getting the vaccines. There's a limited number, okay? We can't just call, you know, up somebody and say, hey, send me 2,000 vaccines. Not gonna happen. It's allotted, okay? And I know Governor Cuomo came on and said, the hospitals aren't doing their job, they're not distributing this quick enough, and, and they're not getting the shots in the arm. That's the, the new catchphrase, a shot in the arm, or. Uh, get the vaccine in the arms. It's not that. If you have, say, say a hospital uh, gets 10,000 
vaccine, doses of vaccine. They got to figure out, all right, first of all, where are we going to hold this pod? Where is it going to be? Okay? You have to have a facility. Second, who's going to put the shots in the arms? Okay? I have 15 nurses working for public health. They want 10,000 shots given. Do the math. Okay? That's crazy. Um, in two days up there, we put 800 people through that were in emergency services. And, John, you went through it. I think it went pretty smooth. Very it smooth. was an in and an out, but it takes about an hour per person to do the whole thing because you're asked a lot of questions to make sure you're eligible. You've got to be registered. You have, we have to make sure that you aren't bringing any COVID into the system or you haven't had it or been exposed to it. We then have to get you through the line because you're the 20th person in line, so there's 19 people ahead of you. We got to get those people through with only five nurses because the other nurses have to be doing other duties. So we got five nurses doing the 20 people that came in. Uh, once you're, you're given the shot, or as you're being given the shot, there's another bunch of questions that you have to answer. You get the shot, that's the easy part. Okay, and the nurses up there are phenomenal. You don't even feel it, it's great. Then they release you to go wait for 15 to 20 minutes to see if you have any side effects from it. Okay, then after that, you get to go home. So now you've spent probably 45 minutes to an hour to go through the whole system. We did have one person that came up and said, hey, I want a shot never registered, wasn't even eligible at that point, that was just the one A's that were eligible, and was very upset that we wouldn't give her a shot. But we have, to, we have to go by what the law says. So now it's opened up to 1B, which brings in a huge amount of people because it brings in senior citizens, and the governor, instead of leaving it 75 and up, he changed it to 65 and up. Well, that didn't increase the numbers at all. <laughs> the numbers went crazy. They put this out to call in for an appointment because you got to have an appointment. You can't just have 10,000 people show up. They had 1,500 doses. They had a telephone line. I'm sorry, the telephone line was for uh, SUNY Albany. And they had, I think, 4,000 doses or something like that. In 40 minutes, the phone line shut down. You couldn't call. It burned the system. Yesterday, it was released that there were 1,500 doses going to be given at the public health office. 45 minutes, and all appointments were filled in 45 minutes. Um, when, like I said, you need to set up, set up appointments, you need there can't be any walk-ins. You just can't do it that way. Um, where? You gotta have sites, okay? State and county are putting together sites, such as up there. They're looking at, I think it was announced today, they have 18 other sites that are being considered. One is the city center in Albany. Uh, they're trying to get pharmacies involved. Don't call your doctor because your doctor isn't going to have this stuff in, for a while. But if you want, give them a call. You know, I won't tell you not to call your doctor, but he's just going to refer you or she's going to refer you to the public health or the pharmacies. Um, now, the pharmacies are pretty busy as it is, but now they're going to want them to give the shot too. And it's in such demand that they're going to have to dedicate every day. They're going to have to have five, six people that are just gonna sit there and give shots all day long and answer, you know, ask all the questions and do all the stuff that we have to do up there. Um, and sort of a synopsis of it is, the vaccine's produced, distributed, appointments are made, staff is planned, check-in, clearing questions, you answer a lot of questions right now. <laughs> you went through it, a lot of questions to ask. Nurse gives the shot back to the waiting area, scheduled second shot, that's the other thing that after you wait for the 15 minutes, then you have to 
schedule your second shot because this is a two dose uh, vaccine. You get one dose, it's not going to do you any good. You got to have two. So now you're, that's where the rest of that hour is going to be spent, is in that line to get your second dose. You got to make sure you have your second dose before you leave. Okay? Or else it's not going to do you any good. It's a process, is what I'm, I'm trying to say. It's great that we were talking about doing you know, something up the parking lot here, all well and good. Uh, not that it could snow three feet in one snowstorm and, and put that down, or it couldn't be 10 below zero or anything like that up here in the Northeast in February. Uh, it couldn't happen. There's a lot of negatives to that. So the facility is like number one. You've got to have a place. Would this work? It might, but I don't know. You know, we, we've drilled in here for uh, disasters when we have to set it up as a shelter, but we've never done a drill here for a pond, which is different because entrances are limited. You've got to keep people away from each other. You know, there's got to be certain distances and privacy to give the shots, all that kind of stuff. So I just wanted, you know, and rather than trying to say this all to Benny and then say, all right, Benny, you tell everybody, I, I said, would you mind if I just even talked a bit? Um, I do have uh, some information that I'd like to get out to people. Uh, there is an, a number to call, and if we could maybe get this up on, on the website, it would be great. Uh, it's 1-833-697-4829, all right? And that's going to put you in touch with New York State to start you on the, on the adventure to get an appointment. Um, and it may not be local. It may be in Albany, it may be in Troy, it may be up in Queensbury. You can't get it around the corner. I had somebody say to me the other day, well, they told me I have to go all the way down to Clifton Bar. I said, did you take the appointment? Well, no, I don't want to drive all the way down there. I said, guess what? You know where the appointments are now? 14 weeks out. As of today, 14 weeks before you're going to get an appointment. Unless you happen to hit the right lottery and get the appointment up at the, uh, the town next week, if, or the county rather, next week, if you get in there. Okay? Looks like you have a question. Oh, I, I have lots of them. Uh, good. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be up for questions in a minute, okay? Oh, okay? I just got a couple more points to make. Um, so it could be, could be anywhere. Nobody wants to drive to Albany. Nobody wants to drive to Troy. Troy's, Troy, the entire town, is a one-way street, so it's really tough to get around. Uh, Albany is not so bad. It was a SUNY campus, so you get off of I-90 and, you know, you're right in there and out, in and out. Very efficient operation down there. Um, the other thing is to check the... Uh, public health, Saratoga County public health website daily. Do it first thing in the morning because if they post it, maybe you'll get in. And I would start at 8 o'clock to see if you can get in. My other, my other pleading is for everybody that's sitting here, anybody, everybody here got a laptop or a computer of some kind? This is what we need. We need you folks to get out there and help our senior citizens. A lot of senior citizens don't know anything, you know, what's that email machine thing that you have? I don't know what it is. They don't know. You get somebody that's 85 years old, and they can be in full control of their faculties and everything, but they aren't computer literate. I'm not 100% computer literate, but I, I use it every day. But the folks that are computer literate, we need you guys to get out there, go to the seniors, senior housing. Go to Doubleday Woods. Go to the apartments over here. Talk with the manager of the place and say, can we set up a way to register people? You know, my son was doing that the other day, and he registered nine people in about an hour. Okay? That's what we need. We need people to register so that you will have the ability to get your shot. And if you did it for an hour, once a week, guess how many people would get in? That's all it would take, is an hour every week. If you can give some time to public health to sit there and help check people in, call public health say, I'd like to help. Okay? We need that help. It's, it's, it's hard to 
get folks involved with it, but it's a need. And people are dying from this stuff. I mean, it's not, you know, I, I sympathize with the stop signs. I sympathize with the uh, noise from the, uh, the junkyard over there. I sympathize with all this. This is needed. People are dying from it. And we're all, we're all accountable for it. It's something we all need to do and help with. If you got 10 minutes, if you got an hour after dinner, and you can go to, go to somewhere where you can help some people, okay? Like I said, I'm open to questions. I don't know that I'll have all the answers, <laughs> but I try. I was on a site today. Were you? Okay. I was, and it said I was eligible, mm -hmm. and then it came off the list of places, none of which were on the list that you had mentioned. Maybe not. Yeah, there's others. Yeah. They're, they're, but it, it took into a lot of them, maybe about 30 of them. Mm -hmm. And of course, you go down and it says, ho, 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 ho. So the question that I have is every, every time, so evidently I couldn't sign in. They, they accepted yeah. me that I was acceptable. Is that wonderful? Yeah, you're eligible. <laughs> I'm eligible. There you go. But they wouldn't accept me. Yeah. So right. does that mean the next time I go on that I have to fill out that whole yeah. front yes, you thing do. again? Yes, you do. Yes. Okay. Yes, the county, the county is being, the county and the state sites are being just overrun. With, I understand With that. people trying to get, get in. And there was a, a public safety meeting, and they're, they're working on trying to expand the ability for people to get in without the system crashing. I tried for three hours Monday night to get my mom a shot, and every time I got close, it crashed and had to start over. I finally got to the site where I could actually pick a time for her to go. Pick the time. It was already January 26th. When I picked the time that was available, that pressing of the button crashed the whole system. I had to go back in, and when I went back in and was back to that again, there was no times available and no slots available at the five places that I had already picked. So the county is aware of the problems they're having, and they're working with the state to try to uh, open up and give more ways for people to get through. They're also asking people not to be panicky and selfish. If you are not in 1A or 1B or under 65, please don't try to crowd the system with you know your application. You're going to get turned down. One of the first questions is your age. If you don't, unless you lie about your age, which they're going to want to see when you get there, and that's going to be a horrible waste of time for everybody. So they're kind of asking for patience. I know it's difficult and, and hard to do. Everybody wants to try to do the right thing. But they're, they're, they're asking for patience, and, and John and, and Ray, you both said we had, like I said, we had a meeting this afternoon, and I heard nothing but good things about the process that happened up at the safety, public safety building. It was smooth, it was efficient, it was very well run. And so I think our, our county in particular has done their homework for years, like you said, right? They've been practicing this kind of thing for many, many years, and when it finally got to be used, it went very, very well. I, but, I've been involved in the, in the drilling for this as a participant. You know, I'm, I'm by no means taking credit for any of it, but I've been a participant in this for eight to ten years. So that's how far back we go in planning for a mass uh, a mass inoculation. Well, I, if, so. if you wouldn't mind, I'd like to meet with you afterwards. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I'm membership chairman of the Boston Area Seniors. Right, I know. Yeah. And uh, as a matter of fact, in the next week or so, we're putting out a mass mailing to all of our members, which is close to 425 people, mm -hmm. seniors. Um, so if you can give me any kind of information that I've Absolutely, I'll, that, that I'll stick around. Yeah. And by the way. I don't leave early. <laughs> by the way. Out of those 425 members, at least 270 of them are computer literate. Good, good. All right. Then they could help the yeah, others. They absolutely. Much take if, care of absolutely. Themselves. if each one of those took care of one person, boom, and everybody's and registered. Pretty close. Yeah. Pretty close knit group of people. Yeah. So. Just to give you an idea, you had 1,500 shots yeah. available. Just 65 and older people in Saratoga County accounts for 45,000. I know. It's yeah. impossible. Plus all the emergency services people that just opened up, firefighters, police officers. Yeah, everybody in, in emergency services. So, Maybe you should just hang back and not everybody. And I look at the websites every morning, and from Cloversville to 
Warren County to Albany Met. Yeah. Ellis is one, and I can understand your pain because it just. Saratoga County has one of the highest vaccine rates, though. We're we're right now, well, again, as of this morning, uh, we were at almost five percent of the residents of Saratoga County, which is about ten thousand people. That's five percent. Wow. You know, which is higher than most other areas percentage-wise in, in this area of the state, at least. In upstate New York, we found this afternoon, Dr. Coles was speaking, and we are the highest rate um, uh, rate of vaccination per capita. So our, our, yeah, our exactly. county is doing yeah. a very good job. As a matter of fact, we, had, uh, we, we got to take in some that people either weren't or their, their vaccine was about to expire, right. and we got and Dr. Cools got a hold of that and was able to distribute it before it expired. And that the governor has also stated that the counties that do a better job will be allowed to get more vaccines as they become available. So <coughs> Dr. Cools and the public health department is doing a fantastic job of keeping us pretty much in the front of the line and one of the top leading counties getting this done. So he's very confident that we will be able to, as more vaccines become available, because of our record and how smooth things are going, because all the work that you guys have done over the last eight, ten years, um, and all of it behind the scenes, people did, people had no idea. You're telling me you're, you're preparing for something that's ten years down the road, and, and nobody even saw this coming. So that's off to public service and, and emergency services for being ready. You guys have done a fantastic job. And the county also has uh, negotiated a deal with the city center, Saratoga Springs City Center, It'll be in the papers tomorrow if it's not already out on the, on the websites, but that would be a mass vaccination site. It won't be for, you know, uh, 50 people or 500 people. It would be a mass when the vaccine becomes available in large quantities, right. extremely large quantities, then the, the city center has agreed to be a, a major distribution point. And, and to Ray's point, there are about 18 other sites that the county has designated uh, at this time I don't know where they are. They have kept that list very quiet and close, very to, the close to the vest for, um, for obvious reasons. They don't want people calling. I don't even know where they are, so I'm not even going to throw something out there as an example because someone's going to call. Yeah. Well, they're located around the county, small rural areas, heavy density areas, so that when and if the vaccine becomes available, people in that area will be able to go and get you know, the shots that they need. And like, like I say, any help that you guys can do and, and talk to your folks, any help they can be, either doing the computer thing, if they can help out at the sites, when they when they do announce the sites, they're going to need help. They're going to need hands. That's and probably if, the biggest problem. Right? Yeah, it is. If you can do an hour, if you can do four hours, uh, I, I negotiated the contract with my wife. She's going home tomorrow. Uh, I told her, you can sit right next to me and I'll show you exactly what you got to do. And, she said to me tonight, she goes, well, I know where you're going to be for the next few weeks. <laughs> I said, well, I, 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 I have to. You know, I just have to do it. It's, it's one of those things. I got my daughter going. I got my daughter-in-law and son-in-law and yeah, everybody I can. Ray, about how many people that. were involved just up at the uh, safety building? As far as working? Yeah, that. that. Probably uh, 30, 35 people. Yeah, and, and we got EMS crews up there. And that's, that's the other thing we're trying to recruit paramedics, you know, and, and we're paying them premiums. I, I told my, uh, my my chief and assistant chief, I said, pay them time and a half if you have to, you know, we'll get it back through uh, the grants and things like that, but uh, uh, through PPP, whatever. I said, I don't care what it costs, we've got to do this, you know. If they if they can come up for four hours, great, take four hours. You know, whatever can be given. And that's what's going to be needed. It's, you know, we're all in this together, you know. Maybe someday we can see these pretty faces, you know, without these funny looking masks all over the place. Yeah. Thank you thank for you, allowing Ray. me thank to talk. Thank you very much. And, uh, we're off. I, I appreciate the update. <laughs> oh, thank you. Sometimes the masks are good things. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Isn't it great you're learning to look at people from here up? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Ray. No problem. Okay, moving on. Resolution 17, appointing Councilwoman Kerr as delegate to the Association of Towns. The Supervisor Zlotnick has the alternate. Um, the, the Association of Towns this year will be a virtual event. There's no way they're going to let... As a matter of fact, I think the hotel that we've been staying at, the Marquee, is uh, on the verge of closing up there off of, off of uh, 
Times Square, which is really kind of telling for what's happening to the economy all over the place here. But um, we, we are going to have a virtual event, and so we need a motion to approve a resolution, I'm sorry, to appoint Councilwoman Kerr and myself as uh, alternate and a delegate. I'll make that motion. Frank, did you second that? You did. Okay, sorry. Okay. Uh, any discussion? I thought it was supposed to be a resolution. No, Association of Towns wants it to be a resolution. That's what I just said. A resolution. You said it? No, I said I thought it was. We, we already voted on this, and I asked you, you said it had to be a resolution. I think so we made it a motion before. Yes. The Association of Towns wants it as a resolution. Yes. We made it a motion. Where's the resolution? Do we have a resolution or. Hey, you should have resolution 17 which you have. I do, right here. Whereas pursuant to the associate. I found it. Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> Thank you, I found it. All right, so resolution 17 is to appoint Councilwoman Kerr as delegate to the Association of Towns with Supervisor Slot because the alternate. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the town board of the town of Milton in regular session duly convened does appoint Councilwoman Barbara Kerr as delegate to the Association of Towns with Supervisor Benny Slotnick as the alternate. Now you can. No. Now you can. Good. 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 All right. Frank, you still want a second? Frank will second. Any discussion? Councilman Blaisdell. Councilwoman Kerr. All of stage. Councilman Frolish. Yes. Councilman Zoxon. Yes. Supervisors Alotnick. Uh, I'll abstain. Thank you very much. Next up, a motion approving the proposal from MJ to do a feasibility study creating a water district at Liberty Hills. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Thank you, Ryan. Any discussion? Yeah, I, I have a question. I just have a question. Um, the total on this is sixty-five hundred dollars. Yes. Okay. It, does that go into when the water district is approved? Does that go fall over into the cost to the residents? Yes. We pay that up front, and then it gets rolled back into the bill. And what happens if it isn't approved? Then we have to then then the town will be on the hook for that. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Brenda? Councilman Blasio. <clears throat> Councilwoman Kerr. Yes. Councilman Frolish. Yes. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisor Zalani. Yes. yes. I'm going to pull the motion for the review of Heritage Spring Sewer Works at this time. And we'll move on to the motion to approve the promotion of Jacob Kupferman. For the letter from the Deputy Highway Superintendent dated 12 14, 2020. To Supervisors Lotnick and the Business Office, Jacob Kufferman will be promoted from a grade two laborer year two at a rate of 1919 per hour to a grade four MEO year two at a rate of 2154 per hour, starting on the pay period 12 27 20. Jacob has done a great job over the last two years procuring his CDL license and operating equipment. He will be plowing his own beat this winter and thus deserves this promotion. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, Jason Miller. So I need a motion to approve the promotion of Jacob Kupferman. So moved. I'll second. Thank you, Ryan. Any discussion? Councilman Blaisdell. Councilwoman Carter. Um, I'm going to vote no on this, but I kind of like to explain why I'm doing it. I'm really happy to see um, someone who has worked with the highway department uh, to move up. Or, uh, what are we doing? Yeah, live yeah, chip? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. I'm really happy to see that someone working for the highway department is in their promoting within, and I understand that he worked very hard to get his CDL and, and move forward with this. Um, my objection is the pay scale, and I did this with Bill Lewis, and um, I believe that when you 
go into from a labor level two or three. Um, you go into an MEO, brand new position, level one. Uh, and, and it's just the, what I feel. And um, like I said, I, I voted no on Bill. I didn't vote against Bill. I voted on, on the salary discrepancy. So that's where I stand. I'll vote no on this one to keep it uniform. Councilman Frolish. Yes. Councilman is absent. Yes. Supervisors left. Yes. yes. Uh, next up is a motion to extend our state of emergency. It expires in a couple of days here. I'd like your permission, folks, to extend that for another 30 days, given the way things have been headed. I, I will make that motion, Betty. I, I think right now we're still not in control of our daily averages yet. I noticed they came down today, but that doesn't mean they aren't going back up. So I think it's at this time we don't have a choice. I'll second it. Any discussion? Brenda? Councilman Blaisdell. Yes. Councilwoman Carr. Yes. Councilman Frolis. Yes. Councilman Isaacson. Yes. Supervisor Zalatni. Yes. Uh, next up will be a letter from our receiver of taxes, January 13th, to Supervisors Latinic and Town Board members. The 20, 2021 property tax bills were mailed out on December 31st. At this time, everyone should have received their bill. If you have not received their property tax bill, please contact me at 518-884-2765. I would like to take this opportunity to clear up any confusion regarding payments of taxes. Please be advised that tax payments can be made using the following methods. One, mail the payment to 503 Geyser Road, Boston Spa, New York, 12020. We are picking up our mail on a daily basis. Please be sure to include your telephone number on all checks submitted to the tax office. Number two, to make payments directly to the tax receiver, please visit the community center located at 310 North Line Road, Monday through Friday from 9 to 4. Please use the front entrance under the carport. We will accept payments at the door, or you may use the secure drop box located to the left of the front door, which is constantly monitored, consistently monitored. Uh, number three, you may also make payments online by visiting www.egov.basny.com slash Milton. I'll have Brenda put that up on the, it's on there, okay, thank you. Once the information box appears, type in your last name at the owner field to locate your bill. Please be advised there are additional charges paying your bill online. These charges are not issued by the Town of Milton. They are controlled by the website administrator. Due to the fact that January 31st falls on a Sunday this year, I will accept payments through Monday, February 1st without additional penalties. Respectfully submitted Lisa Wannis, receiver of taxes. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'd like to say just a couple of things before we move to our second uh, closing public comment session. I was placed on four new committees for the year 2021 at the county level. I will be a member of the Public's Work Committee, Trails and Open Space Committee, the Veterans Affairs Committee, and I have been asked to be the chair of the Racing and Gaming Committee for the county for the year 2021. Um, I also was sitting on the uh, law sitting in on the law and finance meeting this afternoon and the county has a reverse 911 system i will give brenda the uh, email address to put on our website for people uh, they are putting out information almost on a daily basis on the reverse 911 system so if you sign up for it you'll be able to get that information without calling in and tying up the phone lines for someone else um, i also i'm going to give brenda the website from the New York State Department of Health that Dr. Poole has passed on to me this afternoon. It's questions about when to quarantine, because they're also being overloaded with questions of my niece's dog, sister's cousin has it, do I have to stay home? And um, they really have more important things to answer than that. So this website, I will give it to Brenda first thing tomorrow morning, and we'll put it up on our website so that if you need information or would like information about your own health, uh, you'll be able to go there and get that. Uh, does anybody else have any business? Just one quick thing. 
I guess we should buy ourselves a speaker system here that works. Well, and that has microphones for everybody. Whether we have to move the one from the old town hall, or what we need to do. Yeah, I didn't turn the I bill understand in for this the frustration of all. Oh, these I, I understand completely. I understand completely. Um, this works and it doesn't work. It works and it doesn't work. I'll maybe what we need is just a couple of speakers to hook into this system and it will work for everyone. Um, do they have the same? Do they have the same problems in zoning and planning, or do these microphones work? Then? We haven't had any problems so far. But I guess it still doesn't give us microphones for everybody. Not for everybody. No. Passing microphones. Well, I, I I purchased a four microphone system thinking that would be enough. I thought maybe with the stand they would uh, they would cover each of us. I can look into it for next. Well, that brings us to our next question. Um, I'm have spoken to several other supervisors in the county, and they are some have never left Zoom only, and, and a lot are going back to Zoom only. I would like to, for the near future, go back to Zoom only meetings for everybody's benefit. I think if all five of us are home, all seven of us are home, or someplace where we can Zoom ourselves with our microphones on, everyone that's watching will be able to hear what's happening uh, without the feedback and. and probably go a little bit smoother. So um, my, I guess under the executive or state of emergency, I'm going to say that this is our last in-person meeting for a while until I feel more comfortable with the numbers being down to a, a better level than averaging around 10%. Um, I'm not going to give a, a definite number out right now, but when I, when I feel that we can do this uh, safely again with everybody, then we will go back to uh, in-person meetings. And it will be the same for zoning and planning. Okay, um, I think that's enough notice. Uh, who meets who meets first now? Planning is next. Planning planning is, next. is a week enough time for them to, to go virtual again, or should we have one more in person? You should be okay virtual, right, Amanda? Well, I mean, you've got everything. Yeah. I'll check with John Barto tomorrow and see if a week is enough time. If not, two weeks is definitely enough for zoning. So zoning will be back well, to virtual. Yeah, zoning will be the 28th. Yeah, that's two yeah. weeks. So they got plenty of time to go virtual. And uh, I will speak to, well, Tina's got her hand up. When we get to public comment, Tina, I will uh, call on you. Uh, anything else, folks? Okay. Um, then I will uh, open it up for public comment. Anybody here? Thank you again. Uh, Michael Landis. Thank you. You can take that off. Yes, Michael Landis, 272 Meadowlark Drive. I just want to clarify that I and the, the people who have spoken here uh, this evening, uh, we understand that during the public comment section that you don't give feedback that you're listening and taking notes. But we do expect uh, and hope for some kind of action on your part on the various things we've brought up this evening. Uh, to remind you of uh, some kind of public hearing on the licensing for Planet, uh, which is, you know, you, you discuss the licensing for a seasonal ice cream truck, but not for the massive metallic waste processing center. Uh, we'd like to see that. We would like to have some kind of transparency and opening of the books concerning what's going on in Town Hall. You heard John Olenek uh, describe, uh, present to you a uh, variety of evidence concerning reports that were ignored and decisions made without board uh, knowledge or consent. Uh, even the closing of town hall from start to finish seems to be um, suspicious or uh, negligent. Uh, I don't want to be too inflammatory here, but we expect some answers from you guys. We, we don't want to just vent our spleen and then go home. We're doing this because we want some you know, some kind of public explanation, some kind of report issue, disciplinary measures, if there was negligence or incompetence at any level, we'd like to know who, you know who's responsible for those decisions and what actions are being taken. All right, I, I won't repeat what others have said, but I just want to reiterate that we're looking for some kind of step forward here uh, together. There's transparency, reform, and some honesty, and. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. 
no one else. Ray? I'm here as Ray Otten, 16 Little Book Avenue, Boston Spot. Uh, I just want to say, I don't make all these meetings. I, I try and make as many as I can. But all the issues that came up tonight, other than the stop signs, I didn't know about that. All those issues, I have heard about at these meetings. I've heard about the, what was it, planet waste or whatever it is. I've heard about that discussed at the meetings by the board. I've also heard about the uh, other estimate that was given on a temporary fix for the building. I remember that being discussed and the fact that there was, I don't know, 140 or 120 or some astronomical amount of repairs on the roof. Uh, I remember that all being discussed at these meetings. And I don't think it's fair for us to say that the board hasn't been discussing them out in the open. I think, you know, if, like I say, I don't make all the meetings. I remember things like that being discussed. And so I, I don't think that's a fair statement uh, by others that have spoken that these aren't out in the open and talked about. And, you know, maybe they're not the cheapest way, but it's not always the cheapest way that makes it better. And, you know, a lot of times you have to spend a little bit more to make something that's going to last for, for more than six months or eight months. And my own personal opinion from a healthcare field worker, if I was working in a place that had a major mold problem or any kind of a mold problem, I would not subject my employees to that. Okay. Well, Thank you, sir. Paul. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rossi. Sorry, Tina, you, I, I, you didn't pop up fast enough there. Okay, Tina, go ahead. Okay. 
That makes sense, Tina. Thank you very much. Anything else? Okay. All right. Uh, seeing none, I'll uh, ask for a motion to adjourn. Can I just say one thing before we... One thing, John. One just thing. one. I appreciate everybody's comments, but when people make reference to a March study or something else, I wish they would make a copy of it so I would answer it. Uh, because it's very difficult to say, well, you had this answer on March 17th, when I really don't know what they're talking about. And maybe we could make that as a request to these because, you know, when we stand up and make these comments, I'd be happy to answer them. Joel, make John Yeah, but, but it's nice to, uh, John has a point, it's yeah. nice to know yeah. someone's going to wait a piece of paper at us and say, you know. Those original when we first moved out of town hall. I don't, I don't want to rehash old history, but we had several employees who have allergic reactions to mold. Was there deadly mold? Is it going to kill everybody? No. But, but for people to be working in that space on a daily basis, I felt, and, and I'm hoping the, at least the majority of the board will back me on this, that for the health and safety of our employees, if it's our house, as it was stated earlier, I don't want people working in our house if they're going to be sick five minutes after they walk into our house. And um, is, is this project going along as quickly and as smoothly as I had hoped it would? No, it isn't. But we are going to get this done. And when we're done with this project, we'll have a house that's going to have a new roof on it and people are not going to be sick every day when they go into work. And that's, uh, that's, that's my piece on that. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. See you in two weeks. Zoom. Thanks,